Namaskar to all. This is Dr. B. Amudambige, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Sri Sarada College for Women, Autonomous Salem. Now we are going to see a few problems on biomathematics. First of all, let us see what is meant by biomathematics. Biomathematics, that is also known as mathematical biology, that's a subject where we can apply the knowledge of mathematical and statistical techniques in order to understand the various models and analyze biological process, phenomena and systems. And also, in this biomathematics, it is possible to apply the concepts of mathematical models and computational methods as well as quantitative analysis to gain insights into various aspects of biology ranging from the behavior of individual cells to the dynamics of entire ecosystems. So, biomathematics plays a vital role in various areas of biological research that includes population dynamics, epidemiology, genetics, ecology, neuroscience and evolutionary biology. So, on the whole, biomathematics serves as a bridge between the biological and the mathematical sciences that enables scientists to quantitatively study and better understand to integrate process and patterns found in living, living organisms and ecosystems. Of course, so it is possible to predict many things that to be obtained can be achieved very well with the help of biomathematics. Now let us see what is meant by a mathematical model. A mathematical model is a description of a system that uses mathematical concepts and language. The process of developing a mathematical model is termed as the mathematical modeling. That includes natural sciences such as physics, biology, earth science, chemistry and engineering disciplines such as computer science, electrical engineering as well as in the social science that involves economics, psychology, sociology and political science. A model may help to explain a system and to study the effects of different components and to make predictions about behavior. That's why we used to we use biomathematical concepts in order to predict many things what we need in our realistic life. Now let us see what is meant by a mathematical model. A mathematical model is a translation of a real world problem into a mathematical notation by forming a mathematics problem corresponding to the real world problem. The mathematics tools, ideas, concepts and techniques, what are all the things suitable to solve the mathematical problem can be applied here so that we can find a fine solution for the realistic theme finally. So the mathematical modeling process can be done by using these six steps. In step one, we have to formulate the real world problem. In step two, we need to make assumptions related to the real world problem, then the same problem to be converted into a mathematical problem in step 3. Then in step 4, we need to select a suitable mathematical technique in order to solve the formulated problem of step 3. Then after getting the solution from step 4, we need to interpret the solution to the realistic theme. Finally, we need to give a judgment the whatever solution we got here after step 5 that to be checked by an expert and that is what we have to done in our step 6. Once all these steps are completed then the same thing can be converted to the real world once again. That's why the loop is there from step 1 to step 6. Now let us see the definition of difference equations because in biomathematics, many problems can be solved just with the help of difference equation, even 
I have selected a few problems where we are going to apply only the concept of difference equations. So let us see now the definition of difference equation. The equ difference equation means that's an equation that involves the consecutive derivatives in the continuous format as given here. See the first equation unk un plus k equal to a function of un k minus 1, un k minus 2, etc. up to un. So when you see this equation, we can understand we are having here the derivatives of order n plus k, n plus k minus 1, n plus k minus 2 up to nth. So this is an equation that involves the derivative, the continuous derivatives of order n plus k to n. That's why we call it as a difference equation of order k. Why we call here this equation as a difference equation of order k means in order to find the order, we need to find the difference between the highest order derivative and the lowest order derivative. That means here the derivatives are given in the surfaces. So, when we see the suffix, the highest order is given in the format of n plus k and the lowest order is given by n. The difference between these two indices gives the data k that is known as the order of this difference equation. Likely, you are able to see the definition for finding the order for some problems as mentioned here. So, as I mentioned already, the order of a difference equation is equal to finding the difference between the largest and the smallest indices in the difference equation. For example, when we see the first equation that is given in the format of yn equal to 0.8 yn minus 1 plus 20. Here the highest order is given by yn and the least order is given by yn minus 1. And finding the difference between the two indices n and n minus 1, we are getting the number as 1, that is n minus of n minus 1 equal to 1. So definitely we can call this example the first problem as of order 1. This is the first order difference equation. Likely, when we see the second example where we are given x n plus 2 equal to x n plus 1 plus x n. Here the difference between the highest index and the lowest index is 2. That is the difference between n plus 2 and n is 2. So we can say the second example is of order 2. So xn plus 2 equal to xn plus 1 plus xn is an example for second order difference equation. A difference equation is said to be linear if its terms are not raised to a power other than 1. Otherwise, the given difference equation is said to be a nonlinear difference equation. I repeat, a difference equation is called linear if its terms are not raised, are raised to a power other than 1 and if the terms are not multiplied together. For example, when we see this uh, problem Pn plus 1 equal to Pn plus A into Pn minus B into Pn square. Here we are given three types of uh, operators. Pn plus 1 is one operator. Pn is given on the right hand side first and second terms. Pn square is there in the third term of right hand side. So, when we see the operators... The Pn plus 1 operator has 1 in its power as well as Pn has 1 in its power. At the same time, P and the last term, there is one operator having its power number as 2. Because of that reason, we can call it as a nonlinear difference equation. Suppose we are given Pn alone in the third term of the right hand side then we can definitely call it as a linear difference equation. Now let us see an example for first order linear difference equation. 
see the first example y n plus 1 equal to a n into y n plus b n. In this example, the difference between the index indices that is n plus 1 and n is given by 1. So, definitely we can call it as a first order difference equation. At the same time, the operators y n plus 1 and y n having 1 in their power. Because of that reason, we can call this difference equation as a linear difference equation. So, collectively, we can say y n plus 1 equal to a n into y n plus b n is a first order linear difference equation. At the same time, we can also tell about homogeneous difference equation. On the right hand side, B plus bn is a separate term where bn is not included with any operator like bn, yn or yn plus 1. Because of that reason, we can call it as a non-homogeneous linear, first order linear difference equation. Suppose when we have y, bn equal to 0, only in that case, we can call it as a homogeneous first order linear difference equation. So, y n plus 1 equal to a into y n plus b n is said to be an example for first order non-homogeneous difference equation. At the same time, suppose y n equal b n equal to 0, then the above equation can be written in the format y n plus 1 equal to a n into y n. So, in that case, this difference equation is said to be a first order linear homogeneous difference equation. So, this is the difference between linear homogeneous difference equation and the no, and non-homogeneous linear difference equation. Now, let us see why we need to apply the concept of difference equation in many of the problems because many of the problems will be involving this, the phenomena which can be expressed only in dynamical format. Modeling with the difference equation is a powerful tool and also it is a simple tool for modeling dynamical systems in biology ecology, the environment and chemistry. Modeling with the difference equations requires only the knowledge of algebra but it does not require knowledge of differential calculus. Modeling with the differential equations requires a course in differential equations while the modeling with the difference equations need not take much strain as we apply the concept of differential equations and also many of the phenomena and uh, the systems available in biological uh, terms can be expressed very well by using our difference equation. So, because of that reason, we apply the concept of difference equations for solving many problems in biomathematics. Here, we are going to see a first problem, the first problem on population dynamics, that's a discrete dynamical system. Consider the population of a city with a constant growth rate per year. The population is counted at the end of each year. For simplicity, assume that there is no immigration or emigration from the city. Model the population dynamic and predict the long-term behavior of the system. This is the first question. And in the second question, we are given that in 2010, the city's population was 1 lakh. The natural annual growth rate of the population is 1% per year. Predict the city's population in 2020 is the second question. And also, we are given to estimate the population over the next 30 years and graph it. Finally, what is the long-term behavior of the population? So, in this problem, we need to form a mathematical model by using the conditions given here 
for the population of a city. Later, we need to find the requirements as given here. On every time, the population of one year can be calculated only with the help of the existing data, that is, the population size of, size of the previous year data. So, there comes the needy for applying the difference equation. Now, let us consider the population at discrete time intervals in one year units. Let us take the notation Pn as the population size at the end of time period n, P0 as the initial population. Of course, the initial population can be taken as 0. In this problem, we are taking the initial population size as uh, 0. Then, R being the constant growth rate per year, uh, the relationship between the current population and the next population is marked by using this uh, difference equation. See, Pn plus 1 refers once again the population size of the city at the end of time period n. So, Pn plus 1 equal to, how can we calculate it? Pn plus 1 is the population size at the end of the year n plus 1 at the same time pn represents the population size at the end of the year pn so we can understand the existing data by using the existing data and the constant growth rate of the previous year will totally give together the population for the next succeeding year pn plus 1 because of that reason we are writing Pn plus 1 equal to the existing population size for the previous year that is given by Pn and the increment in population only for that year from the year Pn to Pn plus 1 that can be calculated by using the growth rate. See the problem given here. The growth rate is given by 1 percentage but in general we can mark the growth rate as R so, R percentage of Pn, R of Pn in mathematics, of means that's ref, that refers a multiplication between the terms given here. So, R of Pn can be written in the format of R into Pn. On the right hand side, Pn is a common quantity that can be taken outside. So, finally, we are getting the equation 1.1 that is Pn plus 1 equal to 1 plus r into pn. So, this is the solution for the first problem where we have constructed the population dynamics by using our difference equation. And next we are moving to find the solution for the difference equation that is given in this 1.1 equation. Of course, here the initial population can be taken as p0. And as the population changes over time, definitely this system is said to be a dynamical system. And the dynamical system changes are given in the discrete time interval. That's why we call it as a discrete dynamical system. And that this discrete dynamical system is modeled in this equation 1.1, that is Pn plus 1 equal to 1 plus r into pn. Now, the successive populations right from the initial year where n is equal to 0 are marked here in the format of p0, p1, p2, etc., pk. See, the notation, at first we have taken pn as the population size at the end of the time period and the time periods are given in terms of years and here n represent the quantity years. That's why P0 represents the population at the end of 0th year, that is the initial year. P1 represents the population of the city at the end of first year. P2 represents the population of the city at the end of second year. Likely the notations are going on and in general we can take Pk as the population size of the city at the end of kth year. 
so we need to calculate all these quantity and uh, these quantities are said to be the numerical solutions of the equation 1.1 now we are going to see how to find the analytical solution of the above uh, dynamical system in order to find the solution or analytical solution of the above dynamical system just we can make use of the difference equation what we have considered here see here given that pn plus 1 equal to 1 plus r into pn so in that equation suppose we mark n is equal to 0 what we are getting then p 1 equal to 1 plus r into p naught in the same equation when we put n is equal to 1 we are getting that p2 is equal to 1 plus r into p1 so when we replace p1 from the first equation to the second equation we are able to get then p2 is equal to already 1 plus r is there so again 1 plus r now can be substituted from the expression of p1 so we are getting totally 1 plus r into 1 plus r that can be considered 1 plus r square into p naught so on every time when we express p2 or p3 anything in terms of p naught we are able to get such expressions if it is p2 we are getting 1 plus r square into p naught likely p3 can be written in the format of 1 plus r power 3 into p naught in the same way and continuing the same format finally it is possible to get this expression that is p n equal to 1 plus r power n into p naught so this expression where we are having a relation between p n and p naught is called the analytical solution of the difference equation so in this way we are able to get the analytical solution now in order to get the solution for our second subdivision let us apply the data as given in the problem so at first we had the format that is p n plus 1 equal to first of all we had the format that p n plus 1 equal to 1 plus r into pn the same equation now can be taken where r is given by one percentage so one percentage means that can be written in the format of one percentage means one divided by hundred one percentage means one divided by hundred already we are having one in addition one percentage or one by hundred can be written in the format of 0 0.01 so already 1 is there in addition and substituting the value of r there it is possible get possible to get here 1 plus 0 0.01 into pn that's why here they have written in the format of pn plus 1 is equal to 1.01 into pn also in the problem we are given that p naught equal to 1 lakh so the population in the year 2020 is given to find out as in the problem it is given that p naught equal to 1 lakh only at the end of the year 2010 so we have to take here the initial time duration from which the total population to be obtained uh, as from the year 2010 Therefore, initially that n takes the value 2010 and we are given to find the data for the year 2020. So, the difference between 2010 and 2020 is 10. Therefore, we can understand we need to find the population after 10 years 
after 10 years means we need to consider n is equal to 10. In the problem we, we are given that P0 is equal to 1 lakh. Both can be substituted in the equation 1.4. So we are getting now P10 is equal to 1.0.1 and into P0. Also in, from the analytical solution, from the analytical equation in the previous slide we had the analytical solution in the format of pn is equal to 1 plus r power n into p naught now that type of solution can be used here that is pn equal to 1 plus r power n into p naught this is the analytical solution where we are going to apply the data for n r and p naught so, n is given by 10, r is given by 1 percentage that is 0 0.01 and p naught is given by 1 lakh. When we substitute all this data, p10 equal to 1 plus 0 0.01 whole thing power n where n can be replaced by 10 into p naught. p naught means 1 lakh. So, on solving these two numbers together, we are getting 1,10,462. This is the value of the population after 10 years. That means the population of the city in the year 2020 is obtained in this format. Likely by using the analytical solution right from the first year that is P1 equal to 1 plus R into P0. We are able to get the population at the end of the first year namely P1 that is obtained by 1,000,000. P2 refers the population at the end of second year. At, again, it can be apply, obtained in the same method and that is obtained in the format of 1,2010. Likely, we are able to get the population for any year, any number of years, even after 10 years, 20 years, 30 or 50 years also, it is possible to get. And uh, the same above calculation can also be obtained either by manually or by using our MATLAB commands. So in that way it is possible to get the solutions for any number of years and uh, this is the way of getting the solution for the given problem uh, and also to find the data after six years we need to calculate the same um, the similar type of problem can also be solved by using the same technique here we are given a similar type of problem where we are given to find out the population size of the species and here the population size of the species increases every year by 10 percentage this is the difference between the previous problem and this problem and in this problem the initial population is given by 100 the same above method can be applied here to find the solution. So, in that way, we are able to solve any type of problem in order to predict the data very earlier with the help of a difference equation. So, the population size problems can be solved by using the technique of difference equation as we have discussed here. Next, we are going to see the forensic problem where we are going to see another application of the difference equation with the help of, with the application of Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling states that the change of temperature of your cooling object is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the object surroundings. So, by using this Newton's law of cooling also, it is possible to find, it is possible to predict the data and here is the problem. A forensic scientist was called to investigate the case of a person found murdered in a room at an office building. She arrived at the scene and started her in investigation by measuring the temperature of the body. At 10 p.m. the temperature was 80 degree Fahrenheit and one hour later, the temp uh, that means at 11 p.m. 
she measured the temperature again. It was 76 degree Fahrenheit. The room temperature where the body was found was set at a 70 degree Fahrenheit. One of the main tasks for the forensic scientist is to determine the time of death. So in this problem also, we can apply the concept of difference equation in order to predict the time of death. The time of death can be predicted with the help of difference equation. In such a way, we can see the application of mathematical model variable in biomathematics by using the difference equation. Thank you.